merchant account pricing is often an apples to oranges comparison. So we're gonna talk about interchange rates and pricing and tier pricing, flat rates, and how all of these compare to one another. So if you've ever wondered which rate structure is best, stick around because I'm gonna get into it here. And at the end of the video, I'll give you the end all be all single comparison factor that you can use to compare any two merchant services providers to each other based on rates and price. So merchant account rates and price, everyone wants to know about this and it's one of the most common questions that I get. And if you're wondering, you know, for example, why Square has a certain rate versus merchant account companies that have this thing called Interchange Plus, you're not alone. And again, I admit that it's confusing to compare them. So to start, let me just remind you about what Interchange is. Interchange is a small fee paid by a merchant's bank or the acquirer to a cardholder's bank, which is the issuer, to compensate the issuer for the value and benefits that merchants receive when they accept electronic payments, in other words, credit cards and debit cards, and it enables banks that issue electronic payments to deliver tremendous value to merchants, governments, and consumers. So that's the official definition anyways, but in short, you can think of interchange as a base cost for all credit and debit card transactions. So a single interchange rate plus a transaction fee in most cases is paid every time a transaction takes place and that goes for all four major card brands here, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover. So with that in mind, let's look at the first pricing model, Interchange Plus. This is known as Cost Plus pricing model and it's commonplace in the merchant account industry. It's often the go-to pricing model for processing companies to offer merchant services to business owners and here's how it works. The merchant account provider simply passes through the network costs, which is interchange, and then adds a processor specific markup to cover other costs associated with maintaining that merchant account such as administration fees, software and technology license fees, customer service, fraud and other risk factors just to name a few. There are two main variables within interchange plus pricing and they are the percentage margin above interchange along with the per item fee above the interchange cost. And both of these things are applied every time a transaction takes place. And since there's hundreds of interchange categories, each with potentially different rates and transaction fees, this pricing model ensures a fixed margin of cost to you, the business owner, while giving the benefit of having actual interchange costs passed through to your account. Interchange Plus is often regarded by industry payment professionals as the true and transparent rate structure when it comes to merchant account pricing, and more on that at the end of the video. So let's get into tier-based pricing, which is one of the other main models. And with tier-based pricing, interchange categories are grouped together and assigned one tier, also referred to as a bucket. So to illustrate, let's say that a tier-based model just takes 10 interchange categories and groups them together into various tiers for which a single rate is applied. All card types that fall into one category share similar characteristics such as being card present or card not present, for example. When tier pricing was introduced, there were three tiers which were qualified, mid-qualified, and non-qualified, and then eventually a fourth tier was introduced and referred to as four-tiered pricing with the introduction of offline debit purchases. So when a consumer uses a debit card, but not the pin pad at the point of sale, meaning they don't enter their pin number, it's referred to as offline debit. This chart shows you how the four tiers break down in terms of rates and qualifying card type. Qualified transactions are for consumer cards most often that are swiped or dipped at the point of sale or the credit card terminal. Mid-qualified transactions are assessed when a card is not present and that card must be key entered like when taking a phone order or, or, or a transaction that takes place in an online payment portal like a virtual terminal. Non-qualified transactions are generally paid when business corporate cards are accepted and the fourth tier is offline debit as I mentioned and that's given when a consumer pays with their debit card in a card present environment. The corresponding percentage rates are shown to give you an idea of what the differences in the rate categories are and these rate ranges are just for illustrative purposes although they're fairly accurate for some companies this is really just for demonstrative purposes. Keep in mind that a card present environment applies to both offline debit categories and qualified categories and can mean a retail environment or a mobile acceptance environment. 
Next, let's look at flat rate pricing, and this is simply a variation of tier-based pricing, and this has been the industry standard pricing model for merchant accounts offered by payment aggregators like PayPal, Stripe, and Square. Typically, one rate is advertised like a 2.75% or 2.9, for example, and those are for qualified and mid-qualified transactions most often. Then there's a non-qualified rate that is charged and not often talked about, but it's important to note because it does get factored into the overall rates and overall costs that you'll end up paying for merchant services. Flat rate pricing is offered by both merchant account providers and by the payment service aggregators like PayPal, Stripe, and Square. So Square, for example, at the time of this video has published a rate on their website of 2.6% plus 10 cents per transaction, and that's for tapped, dipped, or swiped transactions. If you compare Square to a merchant account option, with Square, you're getting a rate of 2.6 for card present transactions, again, swipe transactions, versus a rate from a tier-based merchant account that will be on average below 1.8% for those same swiped transactions. So what's the trade-off? Square doesn't have monthly platform fees where merchant accounts most often do have monthly fees that range from $10 to $25 on average. Remember that I'm only talking about rates in this video or focusing on rates and there's always going to be more to any comparison, no matter what you're comparing, than just rate or price alone. There's always variations in pricing as more and more payment aggregators and payment facilitators and merchant account providers enter the marketplace so the competitive landscape will continue to adjust. So the big question is which pricing model is better? Let's look at Interchange Plus tier and flat rate programs side by side. And I did a detailed comparison video on this before in my how credit card processing works video, which I'm going to link to at the end of this video or up in the cards. And all the content there still holds true, despite it being one of my older videos on the channel. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version here and add a few other thoughts. Since we know that interchange is applied to every single credit card purchase, you're going to quote unquote pay it, whether you're being charged an interchange plus rate structure, tier base, or a flat rate pricing structure. Then we can also conclude that in any given transaction, one of these three rate programs could be better than the other. And that's the important thing to note because it depends on first, your processing environment, whether you're retail or internet, for example, and then there's other variables that come into play, such as whether you're accepting mostly consumer cards or business cards, what your average ticket is, the amount of your total volume, and in some cases, the actual gateway that you're using. If you're a retail store or a mobile environment where the credit card is physically present, and you can swipe or dip the card, unless you're just starting out and you have really low volume, you probably don't wanna use a flat rate program where the minimum rate that you can get is 2.60 when you could get a tier-based program or an Interchange Plus program through a merchant account provider that will give you access to rates that are over a full percentage point lower than that. On the flip side of that argument, you might be drawn to the technology and service of one particular payment aggregator that doesn't charge any monthly fees. And again, since you might be just starting out in business or you're a seasonal company or whatever the situation may be, the pay per use processing model without the monthly fees that Square has could be very appealing to you. The final part of this discussion is a quick note on the label that often surrounds Interchange Plus pricing as it's referred to be the only true and transparent pricing model out there and thus considered to be one of the best or the best one to use. The argument by some people is that it implies to some degree that other pricing models such as flat rate or tier-based pricing are somehow not as good or that the providers offering these types of programs are somehow hiding costs because the inter change rates don't show up on monthly statements and therefore tier or flat rate programs shouldn't be used. Some people have even gone as far as saying that tier based programs and thus flat rate pricing model is dishonest. And I personally don't believe that to be true because as I'm about to show you, the right program is situational. I have to make mention of this here because when considering rates, which is the entire focus of this video, it may influence the way that you look at certain merchant account programs and providers and companies when you're considering what's right for your business. So it's worth trying to objectively look at it here. So consider the following comparison regarding rates and interchange plus versus 
versus flat rate or tier-based programs, and I'll let you be the final judge, of course. In one corner, we have Interchange Plus pricing, which is highly regarded as the true and transparent model, as I mentioned, again, claimed by so many. And on the other side of the ring, we have payment aggregators who seem to be pretty straightforward about their rates as well. And keep in mind that these payment aggregators are tier-based providers. So with all of that said, here's the glaringly obvious contradiction. At the time of this video, both Stripe and Square boldly claim transparent pricing right on their pricing pages of their respective websites. But if Interchange Plus is the only transparent pricing, then how can this claim be true? Obviously transparent and true pricing is just a subjective term used to label certain pricing models whatever you choose it to be. So what do you think? Is tier-based pricing transparent like Stripe and Square? Or is Interchange Plus the only transparent pricing and the best model to use? Leave me a comment below and let me know which one you think is best. As a result of this argument and obvious contradiction, I personally tend to stay away from referring to any merchant services account or company or rate structure with terminology that labels it as the absolute best over others in all scenarios. I've often said that no matter what rate structure that you're being charged, in the end, all of these pricing models will yield an effective rate, one single rate at the end of the month for the privilege of using that merchant account. This effective rate is the only undisputed end all be all rate by which every single merchant account provider and rate program can be compared. And thus, it's the most important rate to pay attention to at the end of each month, no matter what rate program you're on. And keep in mind, as I stated earlier, merchant accounts, much like any other service out there that you might set up for your company, such as payroll or accounting or CRMs or website services, rates and price are never the only consideration. You should always consider everything such as service and software, security, and other specific factors that contribute to what's right and best for your company. If you're new here, welcome and thanks for watching. Leave me a comment below and let me know what questions you have about merchant account pricing and especially as it's related to the rate programs that we talked about today. There's resources linked in the description if you wanna compare the rate program that you're on right now by clicking over to the what's best survey and you can answer a couple of questions about how your business is set up and how you process credit cards specifically. If you enjoyed this content, give me a thumbs up. That always helps out the channel and feel free to share the video with your friends. If you want more payment related videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any in the future when new videos are published. I'm Brian Manning, and I'll see you on the next one.